You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schliff. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore data. So today's going to have to be a very short episode, but I wanted to be able to get out some uh, quick thoughts and be able to continue what I started yesterday at the very least. So let's jump straight into preliminaries. Make sure you are in the Packernet Podcast Facebook group. Follow along in the Packernet Podcast Facebook page. And if you want to help out, leave a five-star iTunes review, a Stitcher review, any other kind of review. Otherwise, patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy. I am doing a giveaway. Probably, I'm planning the rest of the year. And as I said, the more people that get involved, the better the giveaways get. So hopefully, I convince more and more people to do this. And by the time the season starts, I'm giving away tickets and stuff. But as of right now, it's a t-shirt. If we get to a certain threshold, it's a sweatshirt. And beyond that, you get to design your own shirt. That's the plan. Those are the first three steps to this this thing. Otherwise, just supporting the show is also uh, it's also allowed. You can do it for as little as a buck a month. Why don't we go ahead and take our break right away and get straight into it. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in your entire life of test driving a phone network? Well, now you have, because U.S. Cellular is going to let you test drive their network for free for 30 days. So anywhere you go where you got some dead spots, where your service isn't super strong, you're trying to listen to the podcast and it drops out when you go here because you got no internet service anymore, real simple, just whip out your phone, do a little beep boop bop boop, that's you pushing the buttons to go to the right place. And you can get the app and try it out for yourself. So go ahead and test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days. That's U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply, awards based on open signal independent data. So go to uscellular.com for all the details. So yesterday obviously was a pretty glorious day. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because it's entirely possible they sign him to a five-year extension. They end up going 14-2 and two next year and win a Super Bowl. Obviously, I'm talking about the Patriots, but that was an absolutely glorious game, and it was so... It, it, it felt historic, and I hope it is, because not only did the Patriots lose, but despite all the Tom Brady apologists all over Twitter, Tom Brady didn't look very good. He started off that game on that first drive, and I remember saying, this dude looks like Josh Allen right now. That very first sack, he just flips it up in the air, it almost gets picked. It's like, what are you doing? And that's been, I mean, I I can't say all year, like I've watched him, like he's been doing that kind of stuff, but for for the most part, especially the second half of this year, that's been Tom Brady, just not very good. And so it's got to be, I mean, as competitive as as he is, it's hard to imagine the guy's going to say, yeah, I want to end my career losing the wild card and throwing a pick six. But at the same time, also got to wonder if the pay, I mean, he can't just decide. The Patriots have to say, yeah, let's sign this guy again. Not that they have a ton of options. So I would assume if he says, I want to play one more year, they're going to sign him another year. But I don't know. They might just go into the draft, sign a guy. I mean, they're, where are they drafting now? 
Patriots are picking 24th. I can't even imagine the last time the Patriots picked 24th. That's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But anyways, the good, the, a lot of good news here. But some of the really good news is all the worst scenarios are starting to go away. Starting with the New England Patriots. Now if we can get the Vikings to lose, which we'll find that out today then there aren't that many horrible scenarios. I mean, there's the the one amazing scenario in which the Packers win the Super Bowl, but there's also just those scenarios where it's like, please don't let this happen. Now, I don't really want Seattle or the 49ers to win because I'm still a little bitter toward them. And if I had to choose, I'd like some new blood to get in there. Again, if we're, if we're I'm just assuming. I don't want people to freak out. Packers are going to win. You're only allowed to say that. I'm I, We're talking hypothetical here. I'm just happy the Patriots are gone so that I know I don't have to see them win. And if the Packers are not going to win, I'm just saying. Let's get some new blood in there. Would it be the worst thing in the world to see Drew Brees get another one? I, I, can, just, I can feel through my microphone, even into the future, people getting mad at me for even suggesting they would win the Super Bowl. Whatever, I'll move on because the, the positivity people are about to go full-on psychopath. I'm never listening to your show again. I'm serious. I, I'll, I will get that message. The positivity people are the most angry people on the planet. I apologize. Packers win. No questions asked. I don't need to worry about anybody losing because the Packers are going to win. Anyways, um, Buffalo Bills also got knocked out. So from a historic standpoint, again, I really wish I could do a little bit better with the negative side because the Bills probably should have been dead last because, again, Never has a team with that bad of an offense won a Super Bowl, and it was clearly their offense that lost them that. However, assuming that my little thing here isn't just the worst thing ever, the two most likely teams to win in those games lost. And the Patriots' defense did play pretty well. But as I was also saying, the Titans are they are just the right kind of team. I'm not saying I think they're going to necessarily win a Super Bowl, but they're built like a Super Bowl team, which, by the way, the Packers are too. A lot of teams are. When I'm talking about a Super Bowl team, I'm mostly just talking about just kind of solid and sturdy on both sides, resilient. They don't quit, they keep coming. Now you're looking for a lack of volatility, which the Vikings and the Packers and some teams like that do have a decent amount of volatility. I think the Titans do too. They lost two games um, in their last three, two out of the last three, I think, in the regular season. But a lot of the, most teams have volatility. The 49ers occasionally have a what was that game. But still, you know, if we're just talking about winning a couple games, I'm looking for a team that's going to be tough on both sides of the ball. And I think the Titans have that, especially a team that it's funny because during the regular season, if you're the Chiefs or the Saints or whatever, if you just sling it all over the yard, you're the team to go 15 and one. Once you get into the playoffs, I'm looking for a throwback team, ground and pound, run the ball, run it hard, play defense. It's so weird how that happened. And so hopefully... Hopefully, 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 the Green Bay Packers watched how the Titans won yesterday by running the ball a lot and and executing some really precision throws, mostly around 10 yardish, 10 yards ish, to be able to continue to move the sticks and then play in solid defense. Just do that for three games and you win a Super Bowl. If we come out of this game and instantly try to chuck it 40 yards, I'm not sure I like our chances. I mean, even the Texans, which is amazing because you think about the Texans, it's like they don't have a good offensive line. They don't really have a good run game, but they've got a a talented quarterback and they've got a really talented wide receiver. Even they don't just drop back and throw it up to uh, DeAndre Hopkins all day long. It just, they just look like a, I mean, granted the first half, they look like a garbage football team. Actually, they looked kind of a lot like the Packers as far as just like, what is this? This is trash. And then coming back with a just miraculous win, which by the way, I was rooting for the Bills because if I had to choose a second favorite team, it would be the Bills. But I couldn't help but be happy for the ta- Texans. Deshaun Watson is a really, really cool guy. A uh, very talented guy. Um, I like DeAndre Hopkins. I always have. I thought he was very underrated. Now he's properly rated. But at, there was a time at which I was like, this guy is clearly the best wide receiver, and he wasn't getting that respect. J.J. Watt, really cool guy. I mean, th- this is one of those teams that if they won the Super Bowl, I would be happy for him. I'd be happy for them. I'd be happy for their 14 fans that aren't Dallas Cowboys fans. Which, by the way, I'm sure their their fan base would explode if they won a Super Bowl because all the Cowboys fans would become Fairweather Texans fans. Oh, I've been a Texans fan my whole life, man. Until the Cowboys kind of, you know, are good again and then it's Weed and Boys or whatever. Cowboys fans. Tell you what. But yeah, I think, I think the of the teams, 
Obviously, the Packers would be number one to win. I'm losing it again. I am, I'm getting sick, and it's annoying. Like, real sick, not just like, oh, I got the sniffles. Like, I just, I don't feel right. It's like, oh, come on. I don't want Philadelphia. I don't want Seattle. I don't want Minnesota. I don't want San Francisco. So the NFC is where all the teams are that I really dislike. I don't have anything against Tennessee. I actually think Ryan Tannehill winning a Super Bowl would be one of those things where it's like kind of, it's like uh, Kyler Fackrell getting double-digit sacks. It's like you're happy for him, but it's kind of funny because I know you're not good at football. So that is weird. Like, I mean, that was awesome, and you really did a good job, but what? what? I don't I don't get it, but that would be fine with me. Baltimore I've never really liked, but this is a really good football team. The only problem is it's one of those, like, come on, man, Lamar this early? You can't win a Super Bowl in your second year, can you? That's not right. It just feels weird. Mahomes and the Chiefs, I kind of am falling into the I don't like them territory, so I kind of don't want them. Texans I already said. And then again, in the NFC... The only other acceptable team in the NFC to win a Super Bowl that I wouldn't just be upset about would be the Saints. Oh, there it is. Hey, we're back. Just because Drew Brees has absolutely earned it. I mean, this team has been at this forever. The Saints, in my mind, are similar to the Packers, right? They've had this quarterback forever. They've had this coach forever, like the Packers had McCarthy, which obviously has changed now. They're historically a terrible defense, although they've gotten better over the last couple years. I mean, they've been very similar. I always said the Patriots and the Saints were kind of similar to the Packers over the years. But um, anyways, we've got the opportunity now. If the Saints win, it knocks out Minnesota. And then Seattle, Philadelphia, it just doesn't really matter because one of the teams that I really don't want to win a Super Bowl is going to be out. So that'll be exciting. And again, as far as who I want to win or lose, I kind of just don't care. I mean, I've thought about it plenty of times. And it's like, dude, you got a podcast. you gotta, you got to tell the people what your opinion is. I just, I don't know. I kind of think my favorite opinion, and this probably isn't the best way to look at it because it should just be, no, you got to see it as, I, I don't know. But I, I really feel like the Saints winning would be my favorite scenario. Uh, no, excuse me. The Vikings winning would be my favorite scenario only because, well, if the Vikings win, they go play the 49ers. We have Seattle and or Philadelphia at home, which first of all is probably a better scenario than New Orleans. I know everyone's saying, oh, New Orleans in cold weather. Nonsense. That's not how that works. It just isn't. I mean, you know, the Packers' record in freezing cold weather is not that good. Everyone talks about how the Packers in cold weather, you don't want to face that. No, I mean, the Packers at home, yes. It's cold outside, nah. And I just, I don't think the Saints are going to fall apart because it's cold, which I don't even know if it's going to be cold. I have no idea. But then the extra added bonus, not only do I think we've got a pretty good shot against the extremely banged up Seattle Seahawks in Green Bay, which the Packers have been very successful against the Seahawks when it's in Green Bay. Um, I also think we can beat Philadelphia. I know we lost to them already, but, you know, compared to New Orleans, probably. But the other bonus is either the 49ers or the Minnesota Vikings are going to lose. Now, the thought of Minnesota winning and then possibly beating San Francisco is kind of scary, but it's kind of a win-win situation to where... If Minnesota wins, then Minnesota comes to Green Bay, which is a very favorable matchup for us, and San Francisco got knocked out, and we get a home field advantage. And if San Francisco knocks out the Vikings, and we go on winning, then we're moving on to the next round, and as much as it's a really tough challenge, hey, Seattle and Philly are gone, the Saints are gone, Minnesota's gone, we beat San Francisco, we're in the Super Bowl. Otherwise, it's San Francisco and somebody, I don't know. But the rest of the landscape is done, and that that at least is good news. And we might have made it farther than the Vikings, so haha. So that's probably my favorite scenario, but it's kind of, kind of close. The other way wouldn't be that bad either, because the Vikings are one and done, which is great. New Orleans comes here, and if we can beat New Orleans at home, then you got to feel really good about your chances, no matter what, and just hope for some kind of a fluke. In which, I mean, hopefully, then if that's the case, then I want Seattle to win, because Seattle really does have a good chance of beating San Francisco at home. I know they just lost to them, but they also beat them at home last time, and it was extremely close. So that also is not a bad situation. It's just a tougher win here, but then also more likely that you get a team to come to Green Bay for the for the big NFC championship game. So, I, you know, again, it, it's just it's just sit back and enjoy, I guess. It, I'm, I'm going to have a hard time rooting for Minnesota. So, again, e- either way, I just really don't care. Yes, I'm scared that the Vikings get farther than us, and I'm terrified they're going to win a Super Bowl, but I, I you know, I just don't care. <laughs> Um, continuing on with our little thing here with the rest of the teams, just for fun. Of the teams that are playing, it's actually mostly AFC minus the 49ers as far as uh, who has the best chance to win a Super Bowl, historically speaking. But the uh, 
The Saints are highest, but they're almost tied with the Vikings. They're actually extremely close. The difference here being uh, the Vikings are a little bit more evenly distributed, but get a lot of their points from uh, their defense, especially defensive points. But the Saints' offense is what really gives them a boost. So they're pretty evenly matched. And then actually the Eagles and Seahawks are extremely evenly matched as well. The biggest thing going against the Seahawks right now is that in as far as points against, which seems surprising because they're known for their defense, but they're actually 22nd in points allowed. Only two teams in NFL history have had that bad of a defense or worse, the 2007 Colts and the 2012 Giants. That's it. The, the only other team that was even close was the 2010 Saints. They were 20th in, on defense. So unlikely for those reasons. The Eagles are outside of the top 10 in both uh, offense and defensive points. So again, very few teams have ever won a Super Bowl in those two categories. They're just not really elite in any one category. Defensive yards, they're 10th, so they are technically top 10 in one of the categories. But they're 12th on point, 14th on yard, and then defensively 15th on points, 10th in yard. And their quarterback is also mediocre. He's 16th in both uh, overall and as a passer. So everything just across the board is average. And again, Super Bowl winners are usually elite in some kind of category. Again, defense is most important, especially defensive points. The Patriots being out is a big boost to a lot of teams. But it's usually something. Right? Again, I went through all the percentages yesterday. If you didn't listen to yesterday's thing, I went kind of in depth into this. But being top five, almost every Super Bowl winner is top five in one of these categories. Uh, looking at the Vikings, they are top five in points against. The Saints are top three on offensive points, and both of them have top five quarterback. Uh, PFF has Kirk Cousins over the course of the season as the fifth best quarterback and the fourth best passer. Drew Brees, second best quarterback, third best passer. Both of them, at least in, as far as this historic look at things, kind of fit the mold. Um, looking at parallels as far as past Super Bowl winner, uh, the Eagles were also a 2008 Giants team, which basically just means you're not top 10 in any category. It's kind of just a catch-all because the 2008 Giants were an, an anomaly. It's something that just never happens. So anytime you're not top 10 in any category, although, again, the Eagles are technically top 10 in, in yard, you get caught up in the 2008 Giants mold. Uh, the Seahawks I put as the 2012 Giants. 2012 Giants were barely top 10 on offense in both points and yards, but were 25th in points against on defense and 27th in yards. Seahawks this year, same exact same exact thing, 9th and 8th on offense, but 22nd and 26th. It's almost an exact, exact replica of the 2012 Giants. Again, somewhat of an anomaly as a team. One of the few rare teams that won a Super Bowl that wasn't top 5 in any category. However, also, the 2012 Giants, Eli Manning that year was the fifth highest graded quarterback, fourth highest graded passer, and uh, Russell Wilson is second uh, in both overall quarterback and as a passer. So again, almost an exact replica of the 2012 Giants. And then the cool thing is, most of these have been like in the 2000s, these comp, but the Vikings and the Saints actually are a little bit more of a throwback. The Saints are very identical to the 1984 Raiders. Both teams were third in points as far as yards. The Raiders were seventh. The Saints are ninth. Uh, points against on defense, both teams 13th. The 1984 uh, Raiders were a little bit better as, as far as yardage. And I, I have no idea where exactly the 1984 uh, quarterback Mark Wilson ranked. And as for the Vikings, I have the 1981 Raiders, so very similar, but three years earlier. The 1981 Raiders were actually sort of uh, an anomaly, which the Vikings are not because they are top five, but... They were 7th in points, the Vikings are 8th, 10th in point the points against, the Vikings are 5th, but it was hard to find a comp for them, but also 16th in yards, which the Raiders back then were 16th in yards on offense, and then 14th in yards on defense, and the Raiders were 11th in yards on defense. So a fairly similar comp there. And again, it's kind of fun to do this because then you can kind of look at and be able to compare past Super Bowl champions to teams of today. So we'll see what happens. In my opinion, as far as from a historical standpoint, the Saints and the Vikings are the two better teams. I think the Seahawks have a very good chance at being a wrecking ball, though. Um, the Eagles are sort of the team that doesn't really belong in this conversation. But even the Eagles, it wouldn't actually surprise too many people if they ended up winning, just because it's it's just volatile. You know, the Saints have got a ton of injuries. Excuse me, the, the Seahawks have a ton of inju injuries and uh, are just, just another one of the volatile teams. 
you know, the, the, the 49ers, the Packers, the Vikings, the Seahawks, the Eagles, I think the Chiefs, the Titans, Texans. Who does that leave? Baltimore? <laughs> so, anyways, I really got to get going. As I said, short episode and just one, one little commercial break. So, uh, enjoy your day, and we'll take a much more in-depth look tomorrow. You folks, have yourselves a fantastic day. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.